So I am in After Effects. Sorry about that one. Okay, we're gonna have to work with the fact that there is literally a dent in my camera now. Look guys, I've been getting a lot of questions as to how I make my thumbnails. And so in today's video, I figured I'll finally show you guys the process behind how I make a thumbnail. I'm gonna reference some things that are in my editing pack, which is going to be dropping very soon. And when it does, it'll be in the description below. So just a heads up when you see that later in the video. And let's check out how to make a banger thumbnail. I love you guys and let's get into it. Any donations would be appreciated because my camera is legit broken. All right, so you guys are probably wondering why I'm in After Effects. Uh, I like to have After Effects as like my home base. I use a little bit of Photoshop. It doesn't really matter what software you're using. It's mainly the concept behind how this thumbnail is made. So first I'm gonna make a new comp and call it main thumb. And this is where we're just gonna combine all of our assets. So there are just a few core assets that we need to have in our thumbnail. We need a player roto, we need a wood thing, and we need a background. And then you can just add a bunch of sauce if you want to. But those are the three main elements that we need. So let's first start with the player roto. And that just means masking out a character on a specific frame of gameplay. And to do that, we have to open up Fortnite. Oh my God! I've actually already recorded a clip of me playing with a character. It's good to have a character like this because we need something that will contrast a lot with the background. It's good to have a character that pops out and a background that is a different color to contrast with it. And I like to have a frame where the character's legs are kind of spread apart and it's just like in motion. You also wanna make sure that the lighting is really good. So like this would be a good frame because we don't have much shadows going on. The colors are vibrant. So I'm just gonna import this clip. So like this would be a good frame because the colors are popping. There's not that much shadow going on and the character is in a motion. That would be good for the thumbnail. So I'm going to take this frame and we're gonna freeze frame that and then we're just going to mask out the character right here. So I just finished masking out my character and I do this in After Effects, but you could also do it in Photoshop. So if I take this frame, like if I get rid of the mask for a second and copy this frame and paste it in, in Photoshop, then we could just take this frame and click select subject in the top and then it should just give us a pretty clear cutout of the character or not, you know? I didn't even feel like using Photoshop anyways, honestly. So once you have your mask set up, I like to feather it a little bit, so I'll do like two pixels, and then we just have our character. We we still have to do a few key assets here, <laughs> but this is the character. I like to pre-compose this and put it in its own composition and then rename this comp to Roto. That means that this masked character, we can, like if you wanted to change the color of this sweatshirt, for example, you could duplicate the layer and draw a new mask just around the sweatshirt and then change it to whatever color you want if you want to adjust your thumbnail. So 12th hour has a really good piece of wood. All right, 12th made this piece of wood that I like to use for thumbnails, so it's really good. And I also have my own here that I use if I want like a longer plank to, to put in my thumbnail. And again, all of the assets that I'm using in this video are in a free Google Drive in the description below. But if you wanna make your own, you literally just open Fortnite and build out some floors and then mask them out. So that's how I made this one. So I'm just gonna drag that in here. And if you wanna adjust this, you can add an effect called corner pin. So I'm going to drag the upper left and upper right down you always want to make sure that it's the same value. So I'm dragging it about 250 pixels down. And these are like the main elements. So once you have this, we just need a background. A great thing about having friends that also edit is that you can exchange elements between each other. So like Flea also has a background that he made that we sometimes use for thumbnails. And then I also have a folder of my own with some of my own backgrounds. Um, like this one, so I might use something like that. I think that'll be good for this thumbnail. It's just a super basic Fortnite looking thumbnail. Again, this is the most basic version. I'm just giving you guys the template and like the base form so that if you wanna do anything crazy, you have this as a reference. So once you import your background, I like to pre-compose that and call it background because then we can add our effects. 
I'm also just gonna trim this composition. So these are the main elements, and now we just add in the extra sauce to make it really pop. And I'm probably gonna be using some elements from my editing pack, so if you're watching this before the 12th, then be ready for that. It'll be in the description below. So I have the background here and I'm going to control alt Y to create a new adjustment layer. So already this isn't even looking that bad. And when it comes to a thumbnail, it's all about the colors and patterns that we can automatically recognize because a thumbnail is small. We have to be able to recognize what it is in like no time. Like we need to process this thumbnail very quickly. And for that, I'm going to make things much less sophisticated and much more in your face. And to do that, we need to blur the background first. So I'm going to add a fast box blur on this adjustment layer. And I'm just going to boost that a little bit. Now the background is blurred and then we want the character and the wood to be very recognizable. So we also need to contrast the background more. So I'm going to add CC vignette and that's going to help the character and the wood separate from the background a bit more. And again, you can do this in Photoshop. I just feel like much more in control if I'm in After Effects to do these things. So we've added a box blur to the background and then we're going to add some exposure to the background as well. So on this background layer, I'm gonna increase the exposure and then lower the gamma a little bit and just up the radius on the blur. And now our background is looking much more popping. Now we have to separate the wood and the roto from the background a bit more. So first we need to add exposure to the roto. Um, and I'm just gonna up this and lower the gamma correction. And then I'm gonna add an effect called the vibrance so that I can just increase the saturation and the vibrance of the colors that are already there. So the character is popping quite a bit now. And if we wanted to make very specific adjustments to the character, and we can do that inside of this pre-comp. So for example, I can create a new adjustment layer and add an effect called change color and then change this red. We can even add like edge detect on an adjustment layer and change the blending mode to lighten, adjust the brightness of that. So like we get some edge effects going on as well, but that's more so like extra sauce. I'm gonna delete those for now. Just know that that's the kind of stuff that you can do. So back in my main comp here, I'm going to right click on this roto, go to layer styles and add outer glow. And then twirl open outer glow and change the color to white. And then we just wanna increase the size and increase the range. So as you can see, it's just helping to pop out the character more and just make it its own element. So you can adjust these settings and whatever works for you. I like to increase the range and the size quite a bit. And if any of you guys have deep glow, another thing you can do is delete that layer style, duplicate the roto layer, and then add deep glow on the bottom one. And that'll give you a much more colorful outer glow. It definitely depends on the kind of thumbnail that you're making. So in this case, I'm going to leave it to the outer glow. And if you guys have BCC, you can add an effect called cartoon look. This is just an effect that gives the edges a little more contrast. Um, I like to mix it with the original like 80%. Very subtle, but it helps to outline the character a little bit more. And then I just wanna add exposure and vibrance to the wood layer as well. So I'm gonna select the wood layer, exposure and gamma correction and vibrance. And you'll get a feel for like how to work with these values as you continue making thumbnails. And I'm also going to add a layer style, outer glow, and then going to make that white so that we can contrast it from the background. And then I'm going to add another adjustment layer above the background layer with a radial blur effect. And then I'm going to draw a little circle mask in the middle and then change that to subtract and feather it a bunch. This is something I'll do for thumbnails where I'm really trying to make it pop and feel like it's in action. Uh, you can also change this to zoom if you prefer that. Sometimes I'll also put in like a glow overlay like this one and change it to screen and then put that on the bottom. And that'll just give us a little extra color. And this is like the main way that I'll make a thumbnail. And then we can also add text or an arrow so I'll, I'll throw in like an emoji here. You can, you can put an emoji, you know, I just put that in the top right, uh, duplicate it, put deep glow on the bottom. So that's how I would do an emoji. Obviously I would adjust that a bunch, but.
And then we can also put an overlay in the background. So I'm gonna actually use something from the editing pack that I'm about to release. And we're just gonna go to a frame like this and then put it in the background here. And then you can adjust the blending mode to whatever you think looks really good. Try darken. That looks pretty sick. We can also draw a mask on this and invert it if we want it to. Uh, we can we can feather that as well so that looks pretty sick i also increased the mask expansion on that a little bit so that it doesn't go too far into the circle and then just choose a frame that looks good and this is starting to look really nice like you can get a bunch of different amazing looking thumbnails with this workflow and it's also fun to just mix and match different overlays that you can use so like i'll throw in this one that looks pretty sick as well obviously i'm using overlays that haven't been released yet because it's from my pack but but any overlays or like tunnel effects, anything that you wanna add will look good. Now I'm just gonna increase this roto a little bit and you can make as many little adjustments as you want. And I think overall, this is like the main thumbnail that we're looking for. Now I'm gonna add an adjustment layer on top of everything and add a thumbnail grade. And this is a color grade that is from my editing pack. It's going to be dropping very soon. If you're watching this past May 12th, then it's in the description. But for now, you can add whatever kind of color grade you want. As long as you're popping out like the most vibrant colors, it'll make your thumbnail look much better to just add that final grade. So I've added my grade and that's the thumbnail. I usually like to zoom out to see what it looks like if I just like imagine it on a YouTube homepage. And bro, this is looking clean. If I just go to my elements here and throw in a red arrow this is straight fortnite montage clickbait right here dude this shit would pop and i'm going to add some deep glow to that as well and then you throw an emoji on top of that bro it's game over <laughs> i like to put my emojis a little small in the top right some something like this would look really nice and then once you get it set up i like to either add a layer style with outer glow or if you have deep glow you can duplicate this layer and add deep glow on the lower layer but as a base template like as a good montage thumbnail bro i think this looks really good so i just changed the color of the sweatshirt and as you can see you could take this in a bunch of different directions you could swap out the background you could use different overlays you could change the colors on the skin itself and yeah, that's how I'll make like a basic montage thumbnail template. So I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and I love you all so much and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. There's two vids on the screen right now, so feel free to click one if you want. And um, yeah, consider buying my editing pack because you'll get amazing overlays, presets and everything. And you'll also help me fix my camera <laughs> because, because this is kind of an issue.